Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. This is part two of three of my little series. So if you have not seen video number one yet, it is linked down in the description below. I really recommend going and clicking on that before you continue any further into this video because part number one is the most crucial part of this whole series. You need to know the foundation of how to actually grow before we go into parts two and three. This part is all about isolation movements. We've already talked about major compound lifts. Isolation movements are equally as important, but in a very different way. I'm gonna talk about why you should include isolation movements into your lifting routine and how you should include them. So if you guys are interested in seeing how I grow the glutes and all of the good secrets, then just keep watching and let's get into the video. encompassed everything about compound movements and how to actually grow the muscle fibers down to the nitty-gritty and I talked about progressive overloading and the type of training that I actually do I just wanted to clarify something about progressive overloading so basically some people will do one heavy day one volume day and when they do their volume day they cut their weight super light go for super high reps and are essentially exhausting the muscle by doing that while that is still beneficial, it is more beneficial to think of your volume days as still lifting heavy, but staying in that 8 to 12 rep range for hypertrophy. If you lift heavy every single day and you're going for your PR and doing one rep for every single lift, you wouldn't really grow. So you hit a new PR, you got a squat, let's say it was 225. You're squatting 225 for two reps. Now the whole point of hitting that PR in terms of progressive overload is for you to try to get more reps at that weight. Next time you lift, try to hit four reps at 225. So isolation movements are a movement that completely is focusing on one muscle. So obviously it's impossible to avoid training other muscles when you're doing compound lifts because they encompass a large amount of muscle groups. But basically the difference is for an isolation movement, it is movement at one joint and it is supposed to require movement of one muscle or at least mainly one muscle. Doing a cable kickback or something like that is something that is isolating your glutes. So it's really focusing all of the tension on just your gluteus maximus, minimus, and medius. Those three large muscles that encompass your glutes um, you're focusing on that. There are different ways where you can train mainly your minimus, mainly your maximus, or mainly your medius, but for the point of this video, the isolation movements that I'm showing you are pretty much going to be ways to target all three of those, avoiding totally targeting your quads or your hamstrings or your calves in the process of that so that you can focus mainly on putting the added tension onto your glute. So if you watched my last video, you might be asking yourself, why am I even talking about isolation movements when I said that you really should be focusing on doing all of these compound movements in order to grow? It's going to be compound lifts, heavy compound movements. If you are not training them heavy and using compound traditional movements, compound movements are the best when you're doing your major compound lift. It is really, really beneficial for you to learn how to do compound movements. It's really the only way to see legitimate growth. Well, while compound movements are the ultimate way to sort of actually see muscle growth, it's also important to incorporate isolation movements into your exercises to put the added tension onto that muscle group and ensure sort of the longevity of that growth. Normally on a typical workout day, by the time you've completed two to three compound movements, your body is fatigued, you are not going to be able to do a full workout of just compound movements and do them correct. So while isolation movements can be seen as sort of a supplement for compound movements once you are fatigued, that does not mean that they are useless by any means. You should definitely still incorporate these into almost every single leg day in order to see results. But do not 
just do isolation movements. This is the whole point of this series. You need to lift heavy. You need to do compound movements in order to see the growth. But the way to stimulate the extra muscle growth and go the extra mile is to add these isolation movements into your routine. Uh, preferably after you have done your compound lift, you would add these into the end of your workout or somewhere in there along the way. The rule of thumb is sort of three compound movements for every one isolation movement. So the two major instances where you would do isolation movements in place of maybe a compound movement is only if you're seeing that a particular body part or muscle group is lagging in growth. So for example, if you feel as though your hamstrings or in this case talking about your glutes, if you feel you have an imbalance Isolation movements are a really great way to isolate that particular glute um, or that particular area of your body and to get it to sort of catch up in growth. So for example, you could add isolation movements that are single-legged. So you can do single-legged deadlifts, single-legged hip thrusts, adding an extra two to three reps on a single leg isolation movement is a really great way to correct any imbalances. So for those of you who really have trouble growing your glutes, isolation movements are a good way to make sure that they are not lagging in their growth as well. So if you train legs hard and heavy and you feel really quad dominant or really hamstring dominant, doing isolation movements for your glutes is a good way to ensure that they are catching up in their growth as well. If you feel that you have plateaued with a certain muscle group, isolation movements can be the perfect way to kind of break through that. Since your glutes are often kind of overlooked in a lot of compound movements, if you don't know how to correctly focus and use mind to muscle connection to focus in on your glutes, um, this is why isolation movements can be super beneficial because it is a way to target only your glutes in a movement um, without sort of putting much pressure or, or resistance onto the other muscles. So there are certain things that you can do in your compound movements that are going to help you sort of take the tension off of your quads and put it somewhere else. With most compound movements, you are still training multiple muscle groups in your legs. So the only way to just completely focus all of the tension onto your glutes is to do isolation movements. Another reason that you might train isolation movements um, on one muscle more than another one would be for an imbalance of your antagonistic muscles. So, um, I know we're talking about the glutes, but just for the sake of an example, if you are somebody who trains your biceps a lot and you're constantly doing bicep curls and really isolating that muscle, but you neglect doing your tricep movements and sort of really focusing on just growing and isolating the triceps, that is how you could kind of grow an imbalance in your antagonistic muscle. So in terms of your legs and your glutes, if you are somebody who constantly, let's say, does hip abductions and you're really growing your medius, but you avoid doing kickbacks and something that's gonna grow your glutes outward, focusing on the minimus and maximus, that can cause an imbalance in your proportions, in the way that you look and physique, as well as how you perform other movements. And you're growing that part and you're neglecting another part, that can affect more than just your overall appearance. It can affect the way that you perform your other movements. You might find that your squat form is off because one of your muscle groups is so much weaker than your other muscle group. So the point is that when you're doing your isolation movements, it's really important to encompass all of them. When you're doing your research or making your workout or whatever, make sure that for your leg days, you are training all three. So the great thing about isolation exercises, especially if you feel like your glutes are lagging and that you are dominant in other areas of your legs is that they are the perfect way to strengthen an area that you feel is weaker than the rest of your body. You can really focus and use mind to muscle connection to make sure that you are getting the absolute most out of these isolation exercises. It can be really hard to train your brain um, to focus on a particular muscle when you are doing compound movements because the energy that you need to exert is on your brain, the, the rep range that you wanna hit is on your mind. Um, and on top of all that, you're working multiple muscles. So isolation exercises allow you to really just think and focus and use that mind to muscle connection. So I'm gonna go into mind to muscle connection more on part three, so stay tuned for that. So with all of that being said, it's really not vital or even super possible for you to grow much in your isolation movement. Your rep range and your weight is gonna stay relatively the same. There's definitely some room for growth if you're a beginner. However, it's not something you're going to see drastically changes in the amount of weight that you can pull or push for this. And that's totally not the point. The point of these isolation exercises is to hit a certain rep range. Now there's 
different things that say that isolation movements are required gaining muscle and there are other studies that say that they are not totally necessary to maximize your gains for my personal opinion i think you need both i like to think of it as 80 20. i go into the gym i do 80 percent compound lifts i do three to four compound movements every day i like to do another two maybe three um isolation movements typically i pick two isolation movements superset them or just do them separately and those go at the end of my glute workout and I'm simply using the isolation movements as a supplementary kind of thing to go at the end of my workout to prevent any imbalances, correct any imbalances I feel that I have and to add the extra tension onto those muscles. I really really like just going until failure a lot of the time especially if it's at the end of my workout. I have completed my compound movements I have challenged myself and at this point I'm usually fatigued. It's really important that I still perform these isolation movements. So the overall point is that isolation movements can provide more definition to a certain area. It can provide an assistance in achieving ultimate muscle growth and hypertrophy. And on top of all of that, isolation movements are going to just add that extra punch to your workout. They are going to add the extra intensity that we want. All right guys, so I am done talking for now. This footage is my four favorite isolation movements for the glutes. These are the ones that have totally and completely changed the game for me. These are the ones that I find I have the best mind to muscle connection with and can really just focus and hone into that one muscle group that we want to grow. These are my four favorite isolation movements for the glutes. All right guys, so most of the movements that you're going to see here are pretty basic ones. You've probably seen them before, but I truly believe that they are by far the most effective. So first we've got some cable kickbacks. You can get an ankle strap attachment or you can just use an attachment like you see here and wrap it around your foot. This is my all time favorite glute movement here. So you're going to grab a dumbbell and a bench lay down and this really helps you solely focus on just using the glutes here. Try to avoid thinking about using your hamstrings too much and just focus all of that tension into your glutes and squeeze at the top. Move your hands. Like I said earlier, we want to avoid neglecting any of the gluteus muscles, so targeting medius here, we are going to do some cable abductions. Try to avoid swinging and using momentum here as much as possible, as hard as it is, and just focus really on using the side glutes here to get that nice, shapely, round booty. Quickly, I am just showing you another version of it. So this one, you put your leg behind instead of in front. Kind of just gives you a whole different angle for you to fire from. Last but not least, we have single-legged hip thrusts. So this is a perfect example of a way that you could fix an imbalance by doing single leg movements. You can totally focus on isolating one glute at a time, making sure you are squeezing the glutes and avoiding using the hamstrings. All right guys, and that is everything. Thank you so much for watching. This is part two of three, like I said, so stay tuned for part three. That one is coming up real soon. It's just gonna tie everything together and then you're gonna have a little series and more knowledge on just how to really actually grow the glutes. I hope you guys are enjoying these videos so far. If you liked this one, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe below as well. Follow me on Instagram to see more workouts and other kind of content. Keep your eyes peeled for part three coming real soon. I hope that this helped you guys out. I hope that you try these movements and enjoy them as much as I do. And I will see you in the next video. The way to stimulate some extra muff When your watch tells you to stand up, like, let me sit. <laughs> I already did. Come on. Hurry up. I'm going. Right. <laughs> Idiot. Help. <laughs> All right, go ahead. No, you need to put a weight on it. It's gonna fall. Um. <laughs>